Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Programming. Cheers, Kevin here, and today, well, we're going to try and fix all of the disasters that went wrong in the previous episode. So I have here in the launch pad, I have discovered that I have to clean up uh, the launch clamps. They don't seem to automatically just clean themselves up and go away whenever I launch. I don't know. I feel like that wasn't always the case, but who knows? Anyway, I just wanted the game to be running, but didn't want it to be playing a bunch of music, so here we are on the launch pad. We're actually going to spend some time looking at the code uh, that we used in the past episode. So I've taken the liberty of copying everything over from episode 39, and now we're going to go ahead and try and fix some of the problems that we encountered. So the first problem that we encountered, or what, well, rather the problem that was not encountered in the video, but was recorded, <laughs> encountered the two times uh, that I found it, um, we've already fixed, and that is that in our Herald mission, um, in our enable antenna, antennae step, uh, we had this whole Communitron DTS Mark I thing, and previously the part had been named Comms DTS Mark I, and so uh, when we were trying to get the part with that title, it was finding no parts with that title, which meant that basically it would not activate its antennae, which was very disappointing because uh, it meant that we had a dead rock in space. Thankfully, though, the time that I recorded things, uh, it was much more gracious and managed to clean itself up and explode itself into the moon. So we didn't end up with a derelict satellite around the moon. We ended up with a very nice, pleasant lunar explosion, which is fantastic. Love that. All right. But anyway, we've gone ahead and fixed that part. But of course, that's not going to help us if we don't end up, uh, you know, surviving the moon. Uh, the other error that we got was a deprecation warning, or rather a series of very rapid deprecation warnings, and that was in the boot file itself. So this line here, line 11, if not exists, dependency, copy dependency from zero. So what we were doing here is we were saying, for every dependency in this list of things that I require, if it doesn't exist on the current drive, go ahead and copy it from zero. Um, now remember, exists was just a way of checking if the file exists on the current volume, and we said copy, dependency from zero, and the error that we got was that copy is deprecated. So, deprecated is a fancy word for, for it works for now, but don't use it anymore because it's going to stop working, we promise. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the docs real quick and see what we can do instead. In, in fact, it told us to use copy path, but let's try and figure out what copy path even is so that we can make sure we do this correctly, right? All right, so let's jump over. We're going to jump over to the docs. And I'm going to jump over with you. There we go. Okay, so here's the docs, the Kerbal Operating System documentation. This is a very, very great guide. Um, if you're if struggling with stuff, come here and type whatever it is that you're doing into the search bar. You're going to find so many resources. Um, this is really more of a reference uh, about kind of the, about the the language itself. It's less of a less of the tutorial focused stuff. So there's a little bit of that here. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and search for copy path because that's what it told us we should be using. And we get one result, and it says, all right, well, let's go to the file I.O. page. All right, so file I.O. And now it gives us this definition for copy path, and we have to give it a from path and a to path. So, okay, copy path. Now we've got, it says here, copies the file directory pointed by the from path to the location of the to path. Depending on what kind of items both paths uh, to the exact behavior command will differ. So if it points to a file or if it points to a directory. Okay, so you can actually use copy path to copy folders and files. That seems actually really, really cool. Um, we may leverage that in the future, though I don't think we're going to leverage that now. So it gives us an indication of exactly how this should exist, but the question is, what does a path look like anymore? And we actually, if we scroll up a little bit, it says, yeah, so here's some information. Warning, this stuff was changed in 1.0, copy, rename, and delete are now deprecated, so don't use those anymore. Use copy path, delete path, and run path. Um, so you can still use them, it's fine, um, but eventually it will not necessarily exist um, because it's difficult to support. So anyway, um, we can pass it. Okay, so there's a path structure given the path string. You can omit the argument to create a path for the current directory. That's interesting. So now there's a question in my mind as to whether from path, whether we can pass it a string which, or we need to pat, we need to create a path and then pass it that. Although, yeah, the example here, let's see. So, okay, okay, here we go. Here we've got some example paths and bare word arguments. Um, KOS has allowed you to omit quotes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now that there's directory support, the cases in which omitting quotes would be fine is less than before. So, don't do that, basically. We're going to try and basically avoid skipping quotes. But we've got some examples here. So CD, which is, uh, if you're familiar with uh, 
I, I, yeah, yeah, I guess that's just a Linux command, is change directory. So that would change our current directory to a particular thing, and then we could copy a path relative to where we currently are. Okay. Oh no, never mind. I take that back. Okay, so this is yeah, this is a little bit confusing, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make it work. So paths. Oh, there we go. Understanding directories. We should have probably read this from the top down instead of the bottom up. But okay. So uses strings in a yeah, uses strings of a specific format as a way of describing the locations of files and directories. So we'll call them path strings or simply paths. Um, and this will look familiar to users of operating systems. You've got C backslash, you know program files, backslash, whatever, whatever. Linux users are familiar with the forward slash. That's me. I love me some forward slashes. KOS paths look like this. And a full path string looks like this. You have the volume number, and then a colon, and then slash. Now, it tells us that there are two different types of paths. There are absolutely absolute paths and then relative paths. So an absolute path means I don't care what folder I'm currently in. Copy this thing given this absolute directory. And a relative path is you know, relative to the current directory. So we've got absolute paths. It's giving the example of, okay, so volume ID, your name, colon, you know, directory, slash directory, slash whatever. And, uh, okay, we're going to skip that. Let's see. Absolute paths, blah, blah, blah. Current directory, relative paths. So relative paths look like this. So I can say delete path launch.ks, and it's going to try and delete launch.ks only in the folder that I'm currently in. Um, I can also give it relative dot dot, which is go up a directory, um, or I could give it some additional stuff. But anyway, okay, so that's enough, I think, that we can sort of assume that we know how this is going to go. So yeah, the examples here, copy uh, my file name, ks to uh, 1, or 1 being, of course, our current volume, on the, our CPU's volume. That's pretty much exactly what we want, I think, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so let's jump back over to Code World and... Uh, Start writing a little bit of this. So basically, what am I doing? There we go. Okay. Oh shoot. <laughs> Alrighty. So we have we have this list of dependencies, which is great. And let's see, for everything in that list, I'm just gonna put this back here because this is exact. You know, basically what was going on is we have this for, and then we have this thing that happens for every every dependency. We say, okay, if the dependency does not exist, but of course now we have a bit of a problem and that is, well, I don't, I don't rightly know. If we're, so if we're looking at exists, what this is going to do is it's going to, for every line, it's going to run this, this line of code. So what that means is it's, it's happening is saying, if not exists, mission runner v0.1.0.ks, then do stuff, right? Um, and actually we can make this even more explicit about how that's how that's going down. I, there's some weird indentation stuff that's suddenly working that wasn't working before, and I'm not. And now I'm, I'm manually indenting, and it's automatically indenting for me. That's great. Um, but anyway, when it goes ahead and runs, it's effectively doing this, and then it's doing you know copy mission runner yeah, uh, from zero, which okay, fine. So let's go ahead and change the the first thing, the thing that it was complaining about. So instead of copy from, we're going to go ahead and use copy path, which means that we need to give it well, what do we want it to look like? Zero slash mission runner v1, one, nah, v1, zero, ks, right? Um, of course, that we don't want it to just happen. Uh, and of course, yeah, we need two arguments. We need the place that we're copying it from and then the place we're copying it to. The place that we're copying it to was one colon, right? Hooray. Now, this is a string. We don't need a string. We need the actual dependency name. Um, so we're going to go ahead and change that and say string plus dependency. So then when this goes ahead and runs, it's going to go, okay, I'm going to copy path from zero colon slash mission runner dot whatever to one, one colon, which is the directory. And actually, I don't like just having kind of the bare recall. I'm going to say that folder name just because it seems more explicit to me. <clears throat> now, the other thing that I don't like is I don't like the this exists dependency thing now because we're copying it. We're not checking that the dependency exists on the root of the drive. We're checking that the dependency exists in whatever directory we happen to be in. Now, granted, in this script, we're doing nothing where we change the current directory, so we're not like going into various folders and things, but I still don't like the fact that if something were to change our working folder, then all of a sudden exist dependency might break because it says, hey, there's nothing in our volume slash cool files slash whatever slash LOL. Um, we want to make sure that this dependency, this hill climb library or mission library or whatever, exists on the top level of our current volume. So I'm going to go ahead 
and append this to the dependency. So we want to say if it doesn't, if that path doesn't exist, not just the the name, which will be a relative, but the absolute. I want to make sure that there is on our current CPU volume in the top level folder there is a hill climb file. So okay, we've got that written up a little bit, and now we can collapse that, I guess, again. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, we can go ahead and, let's see, if it doesn't exist, do that. Good, and of course, because it's a single line of stuff, we can do it like that. Although, now, this is getting to be a pretty long line. <laughs> uh, and, in fact, I'm going to completely undo that, because... Now, we had these lines, and I complained about this in the last episode. We have these whole, uh, now we've got to run all of these individually, despite the fact that we already typed them out up here. That's annoying. Um, and it is annoying. So let's go ahead and try and fix that, right? Um, actually, real quick, let me set cc equals 80. Okay, good. I wanted to make sure we weren't running past 80 columns, because I don't like having my code extend past 80 columns. And this is kind of getting there. Okay, so we have, if it doesn't exist, go ahead and copy it onto our current volume, from the archive. But even if it does exist, regardless of whether it exists or not, we want to go ahead and run it. In fact, we're running all of these. There's a, there are five lines here, there are five lines down here. So we would love to be able to just go run dependency. But of course, that's going to look for a file called dependency.ks. But now we have run path, and run path is fantastic. So we're going to go ahead and say run path. And again, we can go ahead and just say uh, we can we can add on that dependency. There we go. So now this is going to copy it over if it doesn't exist, but it's going to run it regardless um, after it copies it if it if it needs to, and that means that this file is a little small, a little nicer, a little a little better. Now we did say, I, I had I did talk about wanting to eventually switch out um, these sort of things for uh, keywords like import. Um, so we do things like import, you know, mission runner. Or whatever, and you know, local runner, uh, mission runner is import mission runner, except we need uh, parentheses there. But we're not going to worry about that for now. We're just trying to get this thing back to a point where it is stable and doesn't uh, explode onto the moon. So uh, let's continue along those lines. So we've got this fixed, presumably. We're going to have to run it and see if I've made a terrible mistake of everything. Let's go ahead and look at the actual mission itself because there are a couple of steps that we wanted to add. <laughs> so we had a transfer that somehow, uh, in the episode that we ran, managed to crash us into the moon. So let's go ahead and try and fix that. And we'll say perform correction. And this is going to do basically the same thing that it was doing before. It's going to just try and we're going to have it say, we're going to just say find another burn and execute that about halfway through your orbit, right? So we'll say perform correction. There we go. And then we have a capture. Let's see, perform capture. Yeah, so there were two, there were two basic problems with what we were doing. One um, is that we transferred out and ended up with a, a periapsis that was not great. Um, so we want to have a correction that basically reseeks uh, a maneuver node and uh, fixes that. But then we also want to make sure that once we enter the sphere of influence of the moon, we actually get our periapsis to what we want it to be, right? So perform correction, and then perform capture actually inserts us. We're going to say adjust periapsis. Uh, let's see, adjust lunar periapsis. And adjust lunar periapsis. There we go. Thank you. So now that means we need two additional functions. So let's go ahead and let's see, perform transfer is over here. Now we need another one that's function perform. Ah, shoot, what did I name it? I have the memory of a goldfish. Alrighty, perform transfer, perform correction. I'm just going to create that here. It's going to need to take a parameter mission. And then when it's done, it'll go mission next. We'll go back to that. I'm going to just mark this as to do, so it's easy for me to get back to to do. Um, and then, let's see. Oh, no, this just goes right after. So we go function perform, uh, adjust lunar periapsis, uh, parameter, mission, mission, next, and there we go. I love Vim's autocomplete. It makes everything really nice and convenient. Um, it's not it's not doing any autocomplete based on the language, it's just doing autocomplete based on uh, based on words that already exist. So if you're using, you know, if you have a variable name and then you just hit, uh, you know, autocomplete, then it's like, oh, you, did you mean this other thing that you were dealing with? Okay. 
Anyway, okay, so we have this whole hill climb logic that we were using um, for, let's see, that's perform capture. We're not going to steal from that. So let's look at this first one. So the idea here is that we have this uh, local maneuver is transfer seek to the moon. Oh, man. Transfer seek to the moon. That's a little bit confusing. I'm not sure if that's going to do exactly what we want, but let's go ahead and take a look at it, right? So transfer, and I don't like this. This makes me angry. I've talked about this before. I don't like magic numbers like this. This is our target. It's 40,000. Uh, 40,000, uh, yeah, sorry, 40 kilometers off of, off of the moon of surface. That is apparently what we want to be, uh, want to be at, but that's not explicit if you're looking at the top of the code. That's now buried in the details of our script, and I don't like that. Let's put that up here. I'm going to say, uh, target mooner altitude is 40 kilometers, and then we'll just put that in here. Target mooner, there we go. And let me just look and see if there's any more of these. Nope, that's the only reference to it. Okay, good. Uh, target. <laughs> of course, I keep losing my references because I'm not uh, not doing a good job. Okay, so we've got that. This is that's what's going on. Let's take a look at transfer because I don't know if transfer is going to. So transfer seek. Basically, we're just telling it to seek a maneuver that gets us to the moon at a particular altitude. That seems reasonable, right? Um, so possibly we could just say seek the exact same thing but just do it later just do some time warping for a little bit and then seek the same thing i don't know um let's take a look real quick at the transfer library and see what we can figure out so uh let's see seek it's gonna get target body target periapsis it's got some attempt stuff it's doing some hill climbing it is seeing if it transfers and then it is trying to do an inclination fit and trying to do a periapsis fit. I think this will be fine. I think we can go ahead and just try and call this again. And hey, if we don't, maybe it'll it'll result in some fun explosion-y type of stuffs. Um, so, okay. Jump back into our mission. Send circularize, blah, blah, blah. There we go. Perform correction. Okay. So, let's see. What we need is the transfer to... We need to, we need to do some time warping. Uh, let's do the time warp again and then we just need to do well okay so we'll put the parameter up here we'll get rid of this to do let's do the time warp again and then we'll just copy this this whole deal so we'll just say make a maneuver um add the maneuver and that's that's great um the one interesting thing now i am just sort of curious is this may just try and say, well, let's delay the time that we add the maneuver. Eh, it'll be fine. It'll, it'll be entertaining. Okay, so, yeah, because this, this transfer is allowed to adjust when it puts the maneuver, and so if we put this thing... Well, anyway, okay. So we need to time warp to probably halfway to our transfer, so I'm going to jump back over to the docs and try and figure out when that exactly is. So we're going to go ahead and search here. Uh, let's see, orbit... Let's look at what we can find out about our orbit. So orbit uh, has next patch. Oh, next patch ETA. Okay, perfect. That's exactly what I want. Um, that is going to return the, the estimated time to the next orbital patch, which would be the transfer to the moon. And that's basically what we want to... Oh, wait, ETA transition, as it's not limited to the patch following the orbit orbit. Rather, maybe change to multiple patch transitions. Okay. Um, oh, let's see. ETA. Oh, okay. So we can do that. Vessel ETA transition. Uh, it always presumes you're operating a current ship vessel. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Ignoring the effect of any intervening maneuver nodes. All right. Yeah, sure. Let's use that. So we'll just look at ETA, uh, ETA transition. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we'll do half of that, say. You know, that seems a reasonable, reasonable thing to test. So we'll go ahead and say, let's see, I don't know exactly how we have the warp logic, but we'll say the uh, local uh, warping time. <laughs> uh, times. Uh, actually, we, I'm sure we've got this in here. Let's see, warp. Do we really not? We have to. Oh, you know, because it's actually, it's all part of maneuvers. All right, let's say maneuver. There you go. Auto warp. Let's see. What do you what do you do when you have warp? Warp to. Okay, so this is just warping to a particular time, so that's that's fine. Where did I have? <laughs> I keep losing my place. What's going on? Come on, Kevin. All right. 
let's let's fix this. Local warp. Uh, sorry. So we're gonna say warp two, and then we'll say uh, time seconds plus uh, ETA transition divided by two. And should we round that? We should probably no. I think it'll round itself. I think that should. Yeah. And it, if this crashes because it's mad that we get a decimal, then uh, then I hate everything. Anyway, warp two, the current time plus halfway to our transition. So, yeah, so basically we'll get halfway through our orbit and then we'll say, hey, let's try and go to the moon. And it'll ignore the fact that we may be on a perfect current trajectory and it'll just adjust the maneuvers until it finds something good, hopefully. Or it'll say, I'm going to try and push the maneuver until we're already in the moon's sphere of influence and that'll be some sort of disaster. But we'll worry about that if that happens. All right, constant, you know, updates and corrections. Okay, so adjust moon or periapsis. So this is, um, now we're going to have to steal some logic from our perform capture. So, um, let's go ahead and let's say what we want to do here. We want to wait for moon SOI. Uh, so we want to get into the sphere of influence on the moon. And then we want to uh, find orbit such that periapsis is target parent moon or periapsis. And then do that. Okay. So the perform capture here, this uh, this thing that already exists, that basically is our circularization step, already has the waiting logic that we were using. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say wait for moon SOI is actually a couple, two different steps. It's going to be warp to SOI and then you know wait for SOI change to be safe. Um, so we'll go ahead and say. Uh, if body equals moon, that'll be the wait for SOI thing to be safe and wait 30. Actually, this seems, yeah, we could structure this better, but okay, anyway, wait 30, that's fine. <clears throat> and then we'll have, we'll put this stuff in here. There we go. Okay, so if body is moon, then wait 30, and then we'll find an orbit and then execute that orbit, which of course means that down here, we don't need to do any of that. We don't need to wait. We can go ahead and just say, go and do your stuff whenever you're ready, bud. That's that's perfectly cool. Because um, we know that by the time we've gotten to your step, we should be already in the sphere of influence of the moon. So, okay. <clears throat> Warp two times seconds plus ETA transition. So, warp two RSOI. And then we are, uh, let's see. Oh, hang on. No, so here, uh, so here's the reason... <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering why we didn't have any warping to the moon. And the reason for that is that uh, the way that our mission script works is that it will go ahead and repeat the current steps so that if we don't have anything, we'll, like if you do something here, it'll go ahead and it'll say if the body, yeah, I'll put that in there, if the body is the moon, then do stuff. But if the body's not the moon, then it'll go through, it'll check if it needs to run anything else, and then it'll go ahead and run this function again. So if we have warp to, then it's going to try and warp to multiple times, and we don't want it to do that. So in fact, we're going to need another function we're going to say await lunar SOI. Actually, is this one going to be okay? Yeah, this one's going to be fine because there's no there's no waiting and checking. So, okay. Await lunar SOI. Uh, and we'll say, huh. Actually, <laughs> we're going to change this to warp to SOI. There we go. Parameter mission. And all this, all this is going to do is it's going to warp to time seconds plus ETA transition. And then it is going to say mission next, period. So this will only run once because when it runs, it'll say, all right, my step is over. Move on to the next step of the game. So we can take that out of there. Um, of course, that means that we do need to add that to our mission sequence. Where are you? Adjust me to perhaps this. Uh, yes. We'll just add that. Warp to SOI. And I do want to clean some of this stuff up as well. Uh, but we'll get to that. Warp to SOI. Good. Thank you. Warp to SOI, warp to, and then go next. And then we'll say, okay, if the body is the moon, then wait 30 seconds. And then, uh, then what? Yes, find an orbit such the blah, 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 blah. So this is figuring out, let's see, we need to find some sort of orbit. This hill climb deal. All right. Hmm. Now this is a bit more complicated. Uh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not the end of the... Well, yes, no, it is. Because we do have to... It's possible that we could be coming in over the top or over the side or any sort of thing. So let's let's mess around with this. Let's see what we can figure out. We're going to go ahead and say set... Yeah, we can't use set delta v. Basically, what we need is something that mimics this uh, transfer library 
that we have that does tweaking across a whole bunch of different different things. And what is this actually seeking? This is seeking a target. Oh, wait, hang on a second. Oh, that's perfect. And we just seek a target. <laughs> I think this is fine. Yeah, transfers. Let's see if transfers two. Oh, no. Okay, so this requires, yeah, this is checking that we transfer to the thing. Let's see, transfers to, next time, transfers to. Um, let's see, if, maybe we can update this. Yeah, maybe we can update this to say that the trans, we skip the transfer fit if you are targeting some, if you are targeting the same uh, body that you're currently around, right? Okay. So then basically we'd just be copying the same deal from here. Uh, okay, well, the problem is we're calling it transfer. Well, it's an orbital transfer. It's That's still fine. We'll go ahead and add that in there. All right. So this will look like that. Now we need to fix that so that that works. That is going to be a problem. All right, you know what? Yeah, we'll, we'll just go ahead and we'll just go ahead and cheat. We're going to use um, this very simple because this this uh, simpler hill climber deal um, only adjusts the. Let's see. Okay, so let's let's copy what you're doing in perform capture. Oh, this is not adjusting inclination or eccentricity or anything. It's just messing with um, periaps. Uh, just melting with messing with prograde delta v. So we'll go ahead and just say. Do that. Okay, so delta V is list zero, and then set delta V to hill climb seek, delta V capture fitness. We're not going to go capture fitness. We're going to change this uh, to something else. And word, there we go. Uh, oops. Actually, yeah, can I do that? Word, change, no. Word, change, let's call this, uh, I don't know, safe fitness. Okay, I can't. oh, there we go. Hooray, yay. Hooray for visual uh, visual block mode. Um, of course, that means that we need to go ahead and take a look at, let's see, time sec add node, time seconds, ETA periapsis. Uh, no, that's not what we want at all. Let's see. Um, hmm. Um, this, uh, this, uh, this is challenging. Okay, so this is, yeah, because the problem is that this is figuring out something for us at periapsis. We don't want something to do something for us at periapsis. What are the other fitness functions that we have? Uh, fitness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. capture fitness. Um, uh, yeah, so the problem is that bo both of these are testing the maneuver at a very specific time. So at apoapsis or at periapsis, we want to test it at, I don't know, time plus something. Uh, <laughs> fine. Well, let's just create that here. We'll say local uh, safety time. We'll put that as there. So what we'll say is, having transferred to the moon, um, we will seek uh, just moon to periapsis. We will say now in here, we'll say set safety time to time seconds plus, uh, I don't know, 120 seconds. Okay, so two minutes after uh, the current time. And then we'll just look at this capture fitness thing. And of course, there it's... There are some to-dos that say, these are very similar. Maybe stop with all that, but we'll ignore that for now. Um, so we've got safe fitness is the name of our function that we need to write, and that's just going to evaluate a candidate solution to the, hey, I found a, a maneuver value, or a delta V value, rather. Um, then when we actually add the node, we will add it to safety time, a hard-coded time, um, and we'll say, all right, so 0, 0, and then uh, delta V 0. That should be... That should be fine, I hope. All right. So, and I think, yeah, that means, okay, so this function actually, if we assume that safety time works, then uh, if we assume that safe fitness works, then I think this is good. This, So this will go ahead, it'll find a delta V such that we have a good safe fitness, um, and then it'll execute it at safety time. And then it'll go to the next thing, which will say, all right, uh, moon perform capture. Okay, I think that's good. So we'll go ahead and close that up. Parameter data, and we'll say local maneuver is node and safety time. No safety time uh, zero zero data zero. So we're going to create a maneuver at safety time, and fitness is zero, and add maneuver. 
whoa. Maneuver. Let's, let's just copy this, right? Copy this. Remove any notes and return fitness. So this is just adding the maneuver to our flight path, taking a look at the resulting orbit, and then saying, hey, what's the deal with that? So we're going to set the score to periapsis. Uh, so the, the score should be the negative of the, uh, let's see, no, the absolute value of the distance between that and our target moon or altitude, right? So we want the fitness. So the fitness, it would be perfect if this number was zero. Um, of course, as there's a, as, as the absolute value is going to mean that we're taking a look at the difference between what the predicted periapsis is and what our target is. And then we want to go ahead and, yeah, we want to make that negative. Go ahead and put that there. So if you have, if, if the periapsis that it's predicting is 40 kilometers, wonderful, your score is zero. If the current one is 35 kilometers, then the difference is five kilometers. So your score is negative five, you know, negative 5,000. So presumably it'll find better things that way. It'll remove any nodes. All right. Hopefully this will work. We'll have to see, right? This should... This should probably work. There are probably some disasters. We will have to. Hopefully, this will die on the launch pad if I if I have done anything wrong. Let's see. Warp to SOI. So that's let's just review what we have added. Um, so we've added this perform correction. Then we've added uh, perform correction. Warp to SOI. Yes, perform correction. Good. Warp to SOI. Good. Adjust moon to periapsis. Good. Okay. So those are the two the three steps that we've added. Perform correction. Okay, so it takes a mission, warps to halfway to our transition to the moon, which assumes that we are transferring to the moon, but I guess we're assuming that that's worked from here. Um, local maneuvers transfer seek moon target moon or altitude. Uh, so we're seeking another transfer to the moon, even though we already have one, and we're just going to say, go ahead and optimize, see what see what you can do. Um, that's fine. Warp to SOI. Uh, mission, warp to time seconds ETA transition. So we're just warping to our transition time, and then here we're taking in uh, the mission, then we're, we're only moving on if we are around the moon, and then we'll wait 30 seconds, set the safety time to the current time plus 120, so that when we're running the safe fitness function, it can verify the maneuver, assuming that we can, that we run it at a particular time. We'll say, okay, then find the delta V um, in our prograde or retrograde direction that gives us a periapsis that is okay. Right? That should be... Yeah, and that that should be fine. And so it's going to st first step by 100 <laughs> meters per second, uh, a delta V, then it'll step by 10, then it'll step by 1. It'll go ahead and add that, and then it will execute it. Oh, and yeah, the last <laughs> the last thing that needs to be in here is uh, actually saying, all right, our step is over, go to the next step of the mission, because otherwise it would just continue to try and do that over and over and over and over again. Um, these are all the same, so all right, I think we're good. Okay, errors right off the bat. Fantastic. Okay, local safety time. Oh, yeah, so this is a thing. This is a little frustrating. Um, you can't just declare a variable. You actually need to set it to some value. Local safety time is not valid syntax. Let's jump over. That should be a quick fix. That'll be nice and easy. But, oops. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Episodes. Uh, EO39. And this is where in our... Yes, local safety time is zero. No error messages, that's good. And it launched, alrighty. So everything compiled, which is good in the sense that it, maybe nothing is broken, but bad in the sense that, hey, if things are broken, uh, we won't find out until at some point during the launch. But we do know that now the run path adjustment that we've made, because we got no warnings about that, there are no deprecation errors uh, sitting here in our terminal. What we do have uh, is a ship that is tilting itself over, which means that we were able to copy paths stuffs correctly from the archive volume to our existing volume because that's what our script did is it copied stuff from the archive and then it ran and if it didn't well we certainly wouldn't be angling over with anything resembling reasonableness in fact we wouldn't have launched at all so we're gonna have to figure out uh yeah we're gonna have to see if this thing if thing manages this thing manages to make its way across here let's see if i can tweak that up yeah because I'm not entirely satisfied with how much brightness... Oh, hang on. It's brightness. Uh, what does this even do? I have no idea. All right. Glad shine light does... That doesn't... This doesn't seem to do anything at the moment. Anyway. Uh, Planet Shine is a wonderful mod. Um, as 
reflections and stuff, I, I do want to start playing around with some of the visualization stuff because I think we can probably handle it now. This is something that is new, is this uh, this wobble, and I'm not entirely sure. It looks, yeah, it looks like we are, this thing is just sort of unstable for, for whatever reason, and the yaw is having to go back and forth. I'm not sure if that's just that the, the steering is being a bit uh, strange. I think there were some small updates to the KOS steering logic. Um, but I don't think anything that should cause craziness like that. It's probably just that this is a little less stable now, for whatever reason, um, in the later version of, of KSP. Oh, man. I love having the, a nicer render distance, because, yeah. Look at that. It's the island runway. You can see it all the way from here. And we are already 20 kilometers, and, yep, as happened last time, uh, we are experiencing some uh, heavy heating effects. Though, that should be fine. Um... I do sort of wonder if it's worth going back and running the uh, genetic algorithm again and seeing, all right, we'll go ahead and try and tune now and see if you can improve kind of using this and as a starting value and see if you can go ahead and improve on it with the new version of KSP just in case there have been some atmospheric changes. So here you see, yeah, there's some, <laughs> we've got some overheating stuff going on, which is scary. Um, this did happen to me one of the times when I was testing this. Okay, but we've reached main, main engine cutoff, so we're okay. We're safe. But yeah, it did happen one time, which was not uh, not super exciting. I think we have less fuel than we did the last time we ran this. Um, let's look at the stage. 79. I think that may be enough to circularize because we go. We have such a great um, orbit with this ascent profile that, man, this, this it, uh, it gets me all sorts of excited in a not inappropriate way. Yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and warp ahead because we know the steps here. The steps are as soon as you get out to space, then go ahead and start computing um, your circularization maneuver automatically. So there we go. We'll go back to normal time, and then it's going to go ahead and do that. Come on, where are you? There we go. Figure your circularization. And that looks like a beautiful circularization. 98 and 98. Brilliant. Um, now this is because we're not even targeting the periasm, we're just saying get your eccentricity down, um, and this is the easiest way to do it. Of course, you know, it's simply the fact that it is more efficient to get the periapse up than it is to bring the apoapsis down to, you know, Earth where the periapsis was. Um, we can go ahead and warp ahead to, uh, close to this maneuver, because this is not auto-warping, but, uh, yeah, we've got some time to do... Oh man, I'm so terrified doing manual warps. I want to. I, I should probably start just building more auto warping into the scripts themselves because, yeah, it's so easy to skip over the stuff, and then I get all sorts of terrified. Um, and I don't know. If, do we have any steering? That it should be locking us. Maybe. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have warped because maybe it was supposed to lock us at prograde, and now this is going to waste a little bit of fuel firing off axis. That's frustrating. But okay, whatever. Yeah. There. Oh man, it's not steering. It is. Um, it's trying to... St oh, so it's... Yeah. That's one of the reasons not to do the time warp. Is because... Yeah. But, okay. That's fine. Yeah, it ended up with a much less exciting... Oh, man. Yeah, we would crash into the atmosphere because of my stupidity if it weren't for the fact that we were doing this transfer. Which, man, I do, I do love watching this. I love it. Just It's discovering. It's learning. Of course, it's learning kind of weirdly because presumably you want the transfer to be like over here. And not over here, because the moon ain't going to be over there when you get out there, buddy. Come on, buddy. Of course, I think we've seen this in the past, where basically it gets sort of halfway out and then immediately starts sort of walking itself over. Um, yep, see, there we go. Now it's starting to, it's starting to go, hell yeah, it's not going to be there. Maybe we should show up a little bit later when the moon is home. Um, so it's going to, yeah, push itself along the orbit and then keep bumping this out until it finds a transfer to the moon. Now, I, we could, of course, speed this up a little bit. I think we could probably just say, like, start off with an assumption of, like, you know, however many delta, like, you know, a thousand meters per second prograde, and just take that as your starting point uh, to tweak, you know, and then just say, go ahead and optimize from there, do your hill climbing from there, um, but use that as your as your starting basis. And Okay. It's, it's, it's got a transfer now, and this, oh man, that is beautiful, look at that. The periapsis that it found around the moon is 40.02 kilometers. That is wonderful. I would very much like that. But of course, you know, execution is going to take a little bit. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's the issue. It's not so much that it, uh, that it doesn't steer, but that 
with uh, with the big booster around it, it was having a lot of challenges trying to steer. So, okay, it's going to go ahead. It's going to wait very briefly. Let's see. It's going to take it down. Okay, we'll, we'll take this down because I am an impatient person. Oh, boy. Why am I? Oh, boy. Now it's estimated burn. All right. Because I was looking at the estimated burn, which is inaccurate because I'm an idiot because it was basing it off of the stage. Of course, we're not using this estimated burn. We are, do, we are doing our own calculations that are correct. So stupid Kevin is stupid is the lesson for you all today. But again, we have that now mid-transfer uh, correction burn, which hopefully will make everything beautiful. Um, although, yeah, we have, yeah, we may be a little bit scant on fuel, I guess, for this. We're going to have to see. And that could just be because I did time warping and should not have. But okay, it, it's, yeah, it's slowing down because it's just trying to get the last 0.1 meter per second of delta V. And what did it find? It found, or what did it, yeah, I can't tell, no, that is, I can't tell if that's the maneuver or the moon and capture moon escape. Let's see, moon and capture. Oh, wait, what, what? Oh, boy. Oh, no. No. Nope, nope, nope. Alrighty. So, what happened there? It warped, but then also... So, it warped, but then immediately started trying to create its transfer orbit. Which is not awesome, or nawesome. Uh, that is certainly interesting. Okay. The object is not... Yeah, so it's trying to find... Huh. Alright, let's look at our script and see see what we did wrong. If we look at episodes, whoops, episodes, E039, Herald Mission, uh, correction, perform correction, warp to this, and then start creating a whole bunch of stuff. Huh. So the problem is that it started trying to add its own stuff. I wonder. Okay, let's let's look at how our maneuver library was handling handling warp two, two. If auto warp warp two that. Good. Um. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and just make a small change. I'm not entirely sure why that is. One would I I one would assume that warp two is not a block. Well, no. Okay. I guess basically that just says start the time warp, but then it immediately started evaluating this next line. Which I guess is sort of non-intuitive, but I guess that's fine. So let's say correction time uh, is time seconds plus ETA transition divided by two. And then we'll go ahead and say warp to correction time. And wait until time seconds, whoa, seconds, is greater than or equal to correction time. So we're explicitly gonna gonna have to wait uh, for this warp to happen, and then you can go ahead and do all your wonderful shenanigans. But okay, um, let's give that a shot again. Actually, let's look here. This is gonna do warp. Okay, yeah, we should fix that here as well. So we're gonna say uh, transition time. Local transition time is time seconds plus ETA transition. And we'll say there, warp to, whoops, transition time. So then we're just safety proofing this for the future. Warp to transition time and wait until time seconds is greater than or equal to transition time. So same deal there. And then we don't have any warp to stuff in here, do we? Uh, no, we have some of the stuff that's inside maneuver, but maneuver already handles uh, the auto warping stuff there for us, which is good. Okay. Um, yeah, that should be fine. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at. Now it is a question of whether <laughs> whether this should count as uh, whether we should just leave this thing here, because I kind of just want to revert it. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and we'll let ourselves revert. Should we? I mean, because all this is going to... Well, no, fine. We'll go ahead and let this thing do its moon or flyby. Of course, this thing is dead in space now. We have another dead sat. Um, yeah, because that's it's cheating to, to do otherwise. Um, the program is dead. We have no communications with this thing. 
Um, but it is around the moon. It is doing a, a wonderful little flyby. And then it will escape. And then... Oh, boy! Look at that! It is going to escape and then fly off into space. That is exciting and thrilling for everybody involved. Well, goodbye to the moon. Um, have we put stuff into... Yeah, we've, we have... Put, I think we've put, like, one satellite into interstellar space. This thing, that's that's exciting. That's 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 very thrilling for you. You can now be the dead relay sat <laughs> with nothing active, uh, just out in out in space. So the moon ended up uh, adjusting its orbit. Where let's zoom way out, and look at that. It's gonna be, uh, you know, it's gonna be all the way out there. That's good. And it's got a maneuver note uh, that can just sort of sit there for <laughs> forever and ever and ever. But alrighty, uh, let's jump back to the space center and uh, we'll go ahead and launch. Herald number four. <laughs> and they're off. Launching their way into space. I need to, yeah, I need to figure out what's up with you, Tag Life Support. I need to install one of those mods that, uh, uh, one of those toolbar mods that this thing will hide, because, man, I don't like that cluttering up my UI. And there we go. It looks like, yeah, the, the periapsis that it managed to get was about 15 kilometers, though it did target a periapsis of 39 kilometers. So now we're going to do some time warping to halfway to our transfer, presumably, and see if this works. So then it's, and then it's it's done, and now it is doing a correction. Wonderful! This looks like exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Maybe we're we're going to have to see. I don't know. That's oh man, it is looking to spend an awful lot more delta v than I would like. Oh, hang on now. Oh, hang on. Yeah. All right. This is better. Oh, right. Cause, so this is yes. This is operating in uh, in steps. So it it was it was trying to adjust these variables independently. Now it's fixing the periapsis. That is looking better. Now it's getting us a periapsis that's close to forty. So this is taking a very long time, um, and I'm not happy. We'll definitely want to change this. But all right, it found something that transfers us out to a forty kilometer orbit. It's just doing it way 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 too late. So we want to set some time bounds on this. Um, I think, yeah, if we were to fix that, that should maybe address this. But, man, that took a long, long, long time to sort itself out. All right. Um, let's wait for this thing. So the uh, the burn is in, the note is in 20 seconds. We don't know how much Delta V this is going to take. I am nervous, though, because we've got two more burns now that we have to worry about. One is a burn that is, you know, in uh, two minutes after our transfer into the sphere of influence. And then the other one is the circularization maneuver. But who knows? We'll see. Oh, there we go. Cannot warp faster when the time is under time acceleration. What? Yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> well, uh, goodbye, world. Goodbye, crew world. Uh, I am going to join Harold 3 out in the vastness of space. So, hooray for me. That's, that's just great. All right. Harold five, another another failed, <laughs> another complete disastrous failure. Goodbye, Moon. We meant to stop by, but we did not. So okay, let's try and see if we can figure out exactly what we can do to uh, to uh, update this. The one thing that I want to do is I want to say instead of having this uh, perform correction, use the seek. I want to go ahead and do the same strategy that we were going to use for our adjust Moon to periapsis, and that is. Um, Basically, we will set a time. Actually, we don't even have to warp here. We're not even going to warp to correction time. We're just going to say, uh, let's just set here, uh, local correction time is zero. Correction. And, okay, so local correction time is, let's see, not, not local. We'll say set correction time, and not is, but two time seconds ETA transition. And then we will just go ahead and use our own custom fitness function to sort this out. So we're going to say, regardless of what happens, we are going to fire at halfway through our transfer. Um, so let's look at what we were doing for adjusting the moon to periapsis. We have here, safety time, local DV is this thing. We have all of this. This is going to be what we're going to do here as well. Um, we're just going to have to give it a different fitness function. So we've got correction. Let's copy that. All uh, right. Until correction, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Okay, so set correction time to that. I'm going to say safe. Instead of fitness, we're going to say correction fitness. Correction fitness. Um, and the not at safety time. 
don't fire it at safety time, fire it at correction time. And, okay, so time seconds ETA transition is the time that we're going to fire maneuver notes. So we're fixing the time. Um, one of the things that I do want to do here, though, um, is we're going to set DV not to a list of just one thing, but a DV to a list of three things. Because um, the maneuver takes three parameters, the delta V in the positive, uh, in the prograde, normal, and radial direction. So we're going to have it optimize on all three, because this is not one where it's just, well, fix that one direction. We'll say, okay, set your delta V to uh, hill climb seek blah, and step in steps of one, that's fine, and we'll say here dv0, dv1, 1, and dv0, uh, dv2. So now we need to create uh, that fitness function, so let's jump down to our fitness functions. Uh, we'll say function correction fitness, there we go. It's going to take parameter data, It's going to when we're going to create a local maneuver, uh, let's copy this from a different one. Uh, yeah, we'll copy. We'll copy from here, um, and then we're just going to try and give it some sort of score. So local maneuver is node, um, not zero zero, but uh, data zero, data one, and data two, um, and not at safety time, but at correction time. And we're going to give it a fitness. We need to figure out a fitness score. How good is this? And let's see. Uh, what we need to do, let's see, if uh, maneuver, how, how, how are we checking this for the actual transfer library? Uh, transfers to, uh, transfer, uh, transfers to, next node, transfers to. We have some sort of function transfers to. There we go. Uh, yes, okay. If maneuver, maneuver orbit has next patch, and maneuver orbit next patch body equals uh, moon. Yeah, we're not even gonna, we're not, we don't need to target body there. Um, then good. Uh, let's, let's adjust that and uh, if this and then good, then we'll give it a regular fitness function. Um, otherwise, we we'll give it some bad. Some very bad fitness function. Uh, so else set fitness to, we have negative infinity in here. So we'll say, let's see, uh, negative two to the 64. All right, there we go. So that'll be just a very, very bad negative fitness score. Um, so we'll have to figure out, let's see, the fitness here, fitness to maneuver orbit, uh, not periapsis, but the next patch. Yes. The next patch of our orbit, it's periapsis, um, and the difference between that and the target lunar altitude. So, good. Harold Fives, oh. come on down. All right, Harold Five has died on the launch pad. Um, unexpected token, close parenthesis, on line 166, period. Uh-huh. There we go, Herald 5. You are the chosen one. You shall make it to space. I'm going to go ahead and pop this open. Yeah, we still have some contracts that I should, I guess, maybe be a little concerned about. You need to, okay, so we need to recover some scientific data from space around Kerbin. That's, that's very easy. Planting a flag on Minimus and uh, the moon, those are the things that, I, well, I guess we're sort of working toward. The idea being that once we have a satellite network around here, then we'll make sure that we have coverage because we certainly don't want to end up with Kerbals that are stranded um, on the planets with no coverage because, uh, yeah, that would be pretty disastrous. So we want to make sure that we have decent satellite coverage. Um, you know, there can be some dark windows. That'll be fine, but we want to make sure that... It could, because the Kerbals, at least in the narrative of the game, aren't flying their own stuff. We want to make sure that if a program were to crash for whatever reason, we'd be able to remote in and, and uh, pilot those folks home. But okay, so this one, yeah, same same darn stupid boring launch vehicle, same darn stupid boring craft. Um, I, I, this is probably the the smallest that I can make this craft with enough battery power to uh, to power this uh, the dish antennas. Um, although I don't know, I, I guess I should have checked and see if the if the power draw is the same, because uh, that may have that may have been updated as well. Um, but yeah, we wanted to make sure that we had enough power for the Omni and for the dish, um, so that these things could. Uh, could hang out around the moon and be fine. All right, so it looks like the maneuver node that it, that it, the maneuver that it found was at 76, but now it's finding a correction, I guess. 
Yep, so it's added a... And it's Yeah, so it's current 176, but yeah, it very, very quickly, now that we're not doing a whole huge transfer deal, it immediately found a small correction of two meters per second that will bring us to a periapsis of 42 kilometers. Oh boy, that's much better. Although, we, yeah, and given that it's... Given that it really only required so small an adjustment, I think doing it at this time is very reasonable. Now, remember, we did it by time, not in terms of distance, but in terms of actual time, because we're moving much faster the closer we are to Kerbin. Now, out here, the amount of time that it will take us to cover this distance was the same amount of time that it took to cover, you know, basically that distance. So, go ahead, we'll fire up this uh, two meter per second maneuver. Although now I'm nervous it's going to overshoot. Oh no, good. It does. It does throttle down on these tiny maneuvers. We. I don't think we had tested it with very tiny maneuvers. We'll see here. Okay, come on. Delete your maneuver. You you got it. Come on. The thing chases around the maneuver sometimes when it's when it's down to the very tiny margins. There we go. 42 kilometers. That is not bad uh, for such a small such a small uh, body. And it's still going to do yet another correction uh, once it enters the sphere of influence. Hopefully, one really really hopes. Um, unless there's some sort of disaster. So it should wait 30 seconds. At which point. It should do a, an adjustment to this periapsis, and then it will go ahead and circularize, which is well within our margin of liquid fuel. I, I'm guessing. <laughs> um, it's it, it, eyeballing it. It certainly seems to make sense. So okay, we just got to wait these these 30 seconds um, with bated breath because I'm still not entirely sure what happened, what went wrong with the last one. There we go. Okay, good. It's alive, and it found yeah a three meter per second adjustment to bring the periapsis. Uh, to 39.79, uh, well, I guess 39.8 kilometers. So that is fantastic. That is far more accurate than we had any right to, to hope for. And of course, it's the way that the, the auto warp thing is set up is that it'll, um, it'll warp until 30 seconds before, uh, just so that we don't accidentally skip over things or if the maneuver takes a particularly long time, um, that that's fine. So it'll wait until, let's see, there we go. Note in a few. Come on, fire it up. This is critically important, or else we're going to be like two kilometers off from our target. Alrighty, there we go. 39.799, and of course now it's gonna... Is it gonna chase it around? What are you doing? Please don't be dead. Okay, good. Yep, it's chasing around that node. Trying to find it. Yep, see, it's... it's <laughs> because we overshoot by a little bit, and then it goes, Oh, nope, 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 that's a disaster. We gotta fix things. And now there we go. It figured out its circularization. Oh man, look at that. Look at this thing. All right, the only step, so if it doesn't, if things don't succeed, we will fly off into space? What is oh no, we will end up just in a, a an obnoxious orbit. But look at that, we are very close, close up on the moon, 40 kilometers off the surface, which is fantastic. Um, of course, presumably, like this, sadly enough, this one is actually in a much better position. But we are in a very equatorial orbit, which I'm, I'm excited about. And let's see, 200, ooh, wow, 260 meters per second in delta V. That, we should be okay, right? We should be fine. Let's watch this thing come down. Look at it go. All right. And then just don't overshoot, because then, you know, if you overshoot too much. Yep, and then go ahead, chase your target around. And, yeah. Go ahead. Do your wobbling around, trying to get it. And there you go, you are done. And look at that. The system has come online. It is is now our second <laughs> Herald 5 is the second successful Mooner Relay satellite. Um, obviously because this is much closer, it is uh, going to be less, I guess we, we could we should probably change uh, the target altitude, I guess for this. Um, but hey, 40 kilometers seemed like a reasonable reasonable enough thing to do. Now I am curious now as to how much Delta V we still have. I suppose we could upload a script and figure that out. Um, and then, you know, eventually maybe crash, you know, send this, see if we can actually transfer this thing back to, well, this thing doesn't have a parachute, but it would be interesting to know with these sorts of margins if we could do a flyby and come back. Because um, that would be helpful to test out as well. Certainly one of the things that I do want to test out with this craft, now that it is in um, sort of a good, I guess this is a decent parking orbit for a pre-landing. Um, so... The idea would be now that we have this this relay sat that's here, maybe we'll boost this. Um, but I'd love to go ahead and test a transfer script that tries to uh, seek out a, a transfer back to Kerbin um, with a decent uh, with a decent periapsis, so that we could see, hey, maybe we can come back to uh, 
Maybe we can, once we get a lander back up, um, we'll figure out the steps of going from this sort of parking orbit down to the planet and then back to a parking orbit, and then we'll figure out the steps of coming home, at which point we can finally start to think about landing on the moon. Of course, as this thing drifts crazily about. But yes, so many, many disasters. Oh my God, so many disasters. And is this light even on? This doesn't, okay, I guess it is. It's just not very bright. Oh, lights on. Lights on. Lights on. Lights on. Okay, that's not, yeah, it doesn't need to be doing much. Oh, the electric power is, 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 it has no electric power? What are you talking? I don't know. Well, anyway, yes. So now we have our floating satellite in space. Finally, <laughs> a success. Um, we've made some updates to our scripts that, uh, that mean that they should work now. We'll go ahead and, I think, try and optimize our transfer library and reduce some of the duplication that we introduced while doing all sorts of debugging. Um, but we'll, of course, have to do all that in the next episode. Until then, have a fantastic week, and I will see you next time. Cheers.